here. I know it's been a while. I don't think you've been waiting for a new video from me. I'm sure you really don't give a shit about what old goulash is up to or anything, but the past few weeks or so, I don't know, I don't have any any idea of what time is. I, but whatever, I guess a month, maybe, I've been sort of hiding out in a crawl space beneath the wolfy lair. Because, uh, you know, you get, you get kind of tired of being tortured by Dr. Wolfula eventually. So, he found me and really, really tased me good. He, he, he tased me for about 24 hours, I believe. At least that's how long he told me he tased me. It's not fun having 20,000 volts of electricity pass through your body for 24 hours. It's very painful. And I think I learned my lesson. I don't know what the lesson was, but Dr. Wolfila told me I learned it, so whatever. Anyway, I guess I should review something, because uh, otherwise I'll be tortured by Dr. Wolfila even more severely than I usually am. Uh, well, the Halloween season is approaching, so I guess I should review something Halloween-like. Uh, Probably a Halloween special. Okay, I, I, I think I got an idea. Okay, um, first I gotta set this up, give you the backstory. You see, in the, in the late 1990s, McDonald's Corporation, I believe, um, contacted a fairly um, well-known animation studio to make some uh, animated videos for them to promote their, you know, to promote their restaurants, their fast food restaurants and to re recruit more kids to uh, eat at the uh, fast food restaurant. So, this animation studio was uh, Klasky Kush... Klasky Kasupo. Actually, no, no, it wasn't Klasky Kasupo. It was Klasky Shupo, I think. Or Kupo, or... I don't, I don't know. I, I know it's not Klasky Kasupo. I, I looked it up, but I forgot how to pronounce it. I think it's Shupo, though. I think it's Klasky Shupo. And... You know, I'm assuming, based on my analytics, that you know about Klasky Shupo. They are, well, you know, if you were born in the 90s, and apparently a lot of my viewers are in, the, in their teens, so, well, not my viewers, Dr. Wolfila's viewers are in their teens, so you should know Klasky Shupo. They are well known as the company that made Rugrats, uh, Wild Thornberries, uh, they did the first few seasons of Simpsons, um, what else did they do? Um, nah, nah. oh, okay, uh, uh, oh yeah, they did Ah uh, Real Monsters, yeah, they did that too. So, yeah, you probably know them. And they did some cartoons for McDonald's briefly. Well, not really briefly, for five years. I guess that's not really briefly. But they did a few animated videos for McDonald's. And I have a sinking suspicion that these animated videos were actually supposed to be an animated series aimed at kids on Saturday mornings. And I can understand why there was that series didn't take off. Because, honestly, it would be slightly evil to have, like, beyond the evil that McDonald's and other corporations are usually known for doing, it'd be really beyond the evil that they usually do to have literally half-hour commercials aimed at kids in the morning, and they watch these commercials, and they want to go to McDonald's, and they eat the food, and yeah, because it, it's one thing to have cartoons that are designed to make kids want to buy toys, but it's another thing to make kids want to eat really fatty foods and die at an early age. That's another completely different thing. So yeah, instead, I guess they went to the video route, but I guess they couldn't even put the videos in the stores because, uh, I guess, uh, it would require too much effort on their part, I guess. So they sold these videos in their restaurants for I, I think three forty-nine, and you had to buy them with a, 
ice cream cone or a Diet Coke. So at least there was a Diet Coke. So yeah, these videos were aimed at kids and they were essentially 40 minute long commercials that parents bought their children. Um, yeah. That was, that was a different era where, where parents would just buy their children commercials. Yeah. And, okay, well, now that the backstory is out of the way, the first one of these videos came out in early October. October 2nd, I believe. At least, as far as Wikipedia tells me, it was October 2nd. The first video was released. It was called Scared Silly. And these videos were called The Wacky Adventures of Ronald McDonald. Yes, they starred Ronald McDonald, the mascot of McDonald's. And he was joined by his friends. The video starts with a live-action host segment featuring Ronald McDonald in his home within McDonald land. It's a fun place. You want to be there, kids. You want to go to McDonald land. And I, I guess everything is made out of McDonald's food or something, which it has to be a lot of oil. A lot of oil and grease all over the place. It's a pretty, it's probably a really, really greasy place. You, you'll probably get a lot of, lot of acne going there. But you want to go there anyway. And yeah, we meet McDonald, Ronald McDonald, not McDonald. His name is Ronald McDonald and his, um, dog named Sunday, who's like a puppet. And I guess Sunday was only created for these videos. Like, he doesn't appear in any other... In any other... He doesn't appear in the commercials, I don't think. I think it was exclusively for these videos. And a lot of the characters in these videos are just in these videos. They aren't, like, uh, in any of the commercials that were before. So yeah, we you got the dog Sunday. And he's a puppet in these host segments. And he looks kind of disturbing. And something I looked up is, he, the puppet is, or whatever it is, I, I don't know if it's a puppet, but I, it's a suit, I guess. And inside the suit is Vern Troyer, who is Mini-Me in the Austin Powers movies. And I guess this was before he was in Austin Powers. So yeah, I just looked that up. Uh, I don't know, it, it helps to have some trivia, it spices things up. But anyway, Sunday is watching this scary dinosaur movie. It's frightening him. And the movie appears to be The Lost World from the 1920s, the silent version. Anyway, they're interrupted by a video call from their good friend named Tika. She is also exclusively created for these videos. She, would, of course, is not in any of the commercials. She's just a normal girl. Which is somewhat odd. Uh, well, anyway, Tika invites Ronald to go on a camping trip in the woods, isolated, far from anyone who can save them in case anything goes wrong. You know the, the deal. And yeah, he, he agrees to go on this trip. After that call, Ronald calls his usual friends, the ones you know from the commercials. He calls them... Uh, I think I have a Grimace. I, I don't know what Grimace is. He's a purple thing. He looks kind of like a jelly bean, but he's not a jelly bean. And I know in his first commercials, he was like this horrifying monster with four arms, I think. And he, yeah, well, since then, he's become more friendly. I don't know what gave him a change of heart. Maybe there was two Grimaces. I don't know. But Ronald invites Grimace, and he also invites his other friend, named Birdie. Birdie is a bird. There, I literally don't know that much about the character. She, I, uh, it's, been, it's been so long since these other characters have been in commercials that I don't recall what their deal was. I don't know what they were before. It's been that long. These characters have not appeared in any commercials for maybe a decade. I don't know. I haven't seen them in that long. It's just been Ronald since then, but whatever. Well, n now Ronald and Sunday are ready, so they jump into a ball pit that sends them down a slide, and they become animated into cartoon characters, transform, you know. And they look pretty significantly different. At least Ronald does. He has kind of a 
he has kind of spiky hair now instead of the afro he usually has. I don't know why they went with spiky hair instead of an afro. Uh, it always sort of came off as strange to me. But whatever. The point is, all the characters are reimagined in this cartoon world. So all the friends arrive to go on the trip. And they enter the magic school bus. At least it looks like the magic school bus. I don't know. They go into the magic school bus and they head out onto their trip. They have all kinds of fun. And probably die. I don't know. It just seems kind of... It, this is a horror movie, you know? These group of, This group of friends goes out on a really innocent camping trip, and then they systematically get wiped out and killed. On the way to the their destination, which is just a random spot in the woods, uh, Tika decides to tell um, a, a local legend about a uh, ghost. The, um, what the hell is its name? Uh, what's the ghost name? Uh, the, the far-flung phantom, and it, like, I don't know what it does. It's apparently, apparently no one has, has, anyone who has seen it has died. So I don't know how anyone knows about it if everyone who saw it died. Tika could just be making it all up. I wouldn't put it past her. She's not that trustworthy. Just because I haven't seen her in the commercials. I, I mean, I know Ronald. I know he's a, he, he's... He's an okay guy. He seems to be, at least. But Tika, she's she's new to me. So, she could be hiding something. In fact, she is hiding something. In fact, uh, I'm pretty much just giving away the ending, but yeah, she is hiding something. She There's more to her than meets the eye. But yeah, she tells a scary story, and it frightens Grimace. But no one, everyone else is just like, no, that, that's, that's retarded. That's, that's, that's no, no way. No way can that happen. There's no such thing as phantoms. Yet there is a such thing as anthropomorphic McNuggets that look like chickens. So yeah, that can exist, but no way can a ghost exist. That's way too crazy. That's way too fucking crazy. No way, ow. I can't believe that. Nah, no, I'm not. I'm not going to believe that. Then then they sing a song to pass the time about birds, rocks, and fish. It, it, it's just a song about things that you see in the woods. Yeah. Um, eventually they do arrive at their camping spot. I don't know why this specific location was chosen. I don't know if they were headed there the entire time or something, or they just thought, oh, okay, this is a good spot. But whatever, they arrive and they do some exploring. Apparently, someone is watching them with some hidden cameras. So I'm, I'm guessing this is a reality show or something. I mean, it was the late 90s with the reality show boom and everything. They, they became pretty big. So, you know, I, I could... Yeah, no. No, it probably isn't. Never mind. Never mind. I'm, I'm just talking about nonsense again. And Wolfula told me what happens when I talk about nonsense. <sighs> I, get, I get the bat straight to my head several times. He, he, has a, he has a robot do it. It's kind of a robot. It's, it, it's automated. And it, it really hurts. Like, it's spring-loaded, it goes all the way back, and then it goes all the way and it hits my face. It, it's very painful. Hi, all kinds of hijinks ensue as, as they're exploring. Uh, I think Sunday chases a little squirrel into a bush, and then a giant squirrel that's like a full-grown man or something pops out and scares him. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty, that was pretty humorous. I enjoyed that. That was funny. <laughs> uh, at some point, they're chased by a bear. And while being chased, Ronald creates some sort of interdimensional doorway. And he sends the bear 
right through that doorway and banishes him into the, another dimension. It's pretty horrifying when you think about the bear probably starving to death in that other dimension. It's, it's kind of a dark thing for Ronald to do. It's sort of out of character for him. But then again, maybe Ronald is hiding a darker side to him that we don't know about. All in all, he just killed a bear. Then they sing a song about setting up camp. Then they set up camp. There you go. That's what they did. That's all you really need to know. They, they set up camp. At some point, Ronald and Sunday decide to uh, leave the group. Uh, for no reason. They don't have any reason to leave the group. They just go out walking for some reason. They don't even talk about anything. They just go out walking. And they see a distant mansion that's all spooky. It's it's your it's your basic cartoon haunted mansion. Scooby Doo. There you go. You you should you should know what to expect. You should probably know what this whole plot is going to be. What it's going to become from here on out. At, at some point, the Hamburglar, who decides to play a prank on everyone by uh, making a ghost that scares everyone. It's the fake ghost. And everyone is in a panic because they think it's a real ghost, of course. But I'm wondering why they decided to bring a criminal with them on their camping trip. They know the Hamburglar is no good, yet they brought him along with them. He is not their friend. He is just manipulating them. He just wants hamburgers. <coughs> <coughs> Though the weird thing about this video is, uh, is that at no point do they eat McDonald's food. No point. I, 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 I guess it would be considered barbaric if they did because some of the characters are McDonald's food. And they don't want to show that on camera. They want to keep that off camera when Ronald inevitably eats the the chicken McNugget kids. Yeah, whatever. The ghost is is fake and Ronald reveals that it's fake and everyone is like, hey, hamburger, what the fuck? This is why we really shouldn't bring you along. This is why we hate you. Because you pull shit like this. At a certain point, it begins to rain and everyone is very scared. It's not heavy rain at all. They can just go into their tent and just have a fine time. Just, it's pretty, it's not, it's pretty weak rain. I mean, there's lightning and everything, but I don't know. Ah, they're, they're frightened. So, they decide to trespass into that nearby mansion. Yeah, kids, do what Ronald does. Just trespass. Just go into someone's house without their permission. Ronald is a good role model. You should always just break into people's homes. The worst thing about their the characters' attitudes, though, is that they're they're trespassing in someone's house, and they have the gall to sing a song about how much this house sucks. This is your only shelter during during a storm, and you're you're complaining about. How, how the house is creepy and stuff, and how it's poorly maintained. Hey, don't don't punch a gift horse in the mouth, or however that expression goes. Don't do that. They they they, they traverse the house, and eventually they find themselves in a room where they meet this ghost head, this giant ghost head, that tells them a riddle that has to do with food or something. I don't know. And it's the, the only way out of this room is by solving the riddle. And Ronald, of course, is the smartest member of the group. He's their leader. He's the, he's the friend of the group. Or I guess the Velma. I, I don't know. But he, he comes up with a solution. And uh, it, it has something to do with standing still on the top of a giant uh, plate. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, on the, on the next floor that they're at, they find a phone booth, and they go into it. I don't know why a mansion in the middle of nowhere has a phone booth. 
doesn't really make sense. Usually you just have a phone and it's in the hallway or near your door or, you know, I, it, you, you usually don't have a phone booth in the middle of your, your house with, like, a sign that says, oh, uh, look, phone booth. But whatever. The, they go in thinking they could call the police or something. I don't know. But the walls start closing in on them. It's an, it's an old cartoon cliche. But I guess they get out safely. You know, they're, they're, they're kind of crushed, but it doesn't crush them all the way. They're just sort of... They're cartoon characters. I guess they can't die. Or that you just can't die in McDonald's land. So yeah, you can eat all the McDonald's food you want. Don't worry, you're not going to die of a heart attack here. That's all they eat. And, okay, or maybe maybe the life expectancy is pretty uh, short. Maybe all of Ronald McDonald's friends, they died of heart attacks. And Ronald McDonald just has a really good health plan. That's just my theory. I don't know. Next they go into a, next they go into a library, and it becomes a maze of mirrors, and they have to get through there, and they sing a song about getting out of the maze. You know, you, you start to see a pattern. Sing a song, something happens. Sing a song, something happens. Yeah, okay. Of course, eventually they get out. And they find themselves confronted by that giant head in some kind of dark room. Some other dimension or something. Uh, I don't know. The head gives all these, all the characters riddles that they have to solve. And he systematically wipes out all of them. Because all of Ronald's friends are dumbasses and they can't solve the simplest of riddles. But, of course, Ronald single-handedly solves the riddle, the final riddle, and it has to do with friendship. The, the answer is friendship. It, uh, it's so corny. It's so corny. And, you know, it, it, you'd think they'd have some kind of moral about teamwork or something to figure out a problem, but Ronald McDonald, throughout this whole thing, solves all of their problems. Everyone else in this fucking video is completely just... They, ah, uh, they're, they're so... They, they, they can't do anything without Ronald. They're so hapless. They, it's, it's kind of sad. So yeah, he, he's, he solves the riddle. And that big head is, like, really pissed off because he solved the riddle and he leaves them. And Ronald finds a wire on the floor. And he follows the wire into a room... A control room where he finds the real culprit, the the real guy who's in charge of everything, named Franklin. He's a, he's a little boy, and he was controlling the house. It was like I, I don't know why he has this animatronic house or whatever, this technologically. Ha advanced house with all these holograms and stuff that's computer controlled. I don't know how he got this shit. And I don't know why he was doing what he was doing. I don't know why he was he was uh, trying to make Ronald McDonald do all these riddles. I don't know what the point of it was. There 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 wasn't a point. That's the thing. It's, it, it seems kind of weird. And also Tika was in cahoots with with Franklin here. She she arranged this whole thing. She set Ronald up to go to this haunted house and to solve all these riddles and stuff. Again, I don't know why they did it. They just did it for some reason. But yeah, all I know is that I can't trust Tika from here on out. All in all, Franklin's dad shows up and he scolds his son for being an asshole and for holding people against their will in a haunted house mansion thing and forcing them to do all sorts of puzzles. Everything is pretty much resolved from there.
They decide to be friends with Franklin, even though he did these horrible things. And they finish off their camping trip. It's a very, very happy ending. I was thoroughly... I was very, very satisfied with that ending. I, uh, the, yeah, it was, it was a great ending. It was, it was, it goes up there as one of the best endings in, in direct-to-video history, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And everything concludes with Ronald and Sunday returning to their, their home that's shaped like an M. And they watch the sequel to that horror movie they were watching earlier. And Sunday is no longer afraid of that movie. He was afraid earlier, but now he no longer is. Uh, for, for no reason, he's no longer afraid. I, I don't know. They don't have, like, a story arc throughout the rest of the video. He just He's just not afraid of it anymore. So there you go. And after all that is finished, Ronald pops in and invites the viewers to come to McDonald's and meet him. And buy the food. So yeah, uh, I'll probably do that after this is done. You know, they have the Monopoly game that they're doing. Apparently it's a one in four chance of winning. So my odds are good. I'm going to eat all kinds of food. And hopefully die in early age. I mean, I'm already dead. That doesn't mean I can't die of a heart attack. So, yeah, hopefully that happens. I really hope you enjoyed my review of a McDonald's video from the late 90s that was basically a, com basically a commercial to get you to go to McDonald's. I hope you enjoyed my review. I, I spent a lot of effort working on it. And, you know, if you... If you liked it, why, why don't you tell me how much you liked it? Yeah, you know, I doubt you liked it, but it'd be nice. It would really help my self-esteem if you told me how much you enjoyed it. Or at least lie to me. Please just lie to me. Tell me you really loved it. I'll know you were lying, but... It... it, 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 it I, I, I can live in a fantasy. Well, uh, this video is pretty much over. This review is over. There's not really a whole lot of reason to wa keep watching. I don't have anything left to review. Yeah. But you should go to McDonald's. Then get a salad. Get a salad, probably. Uh, yeah, get a salad. 